Hello, James here again, and I just want to give you guys a quick update on the battery situation. I did a quick test today. Basically, I've been told that I've talked too much, and basically someone just said, ugh, not another 15 minute video that could be said in two to three minutes. So I'm gonna give a quick summary first, and then we'll move on to more details for anyone that wants it. Two minute breakdown, starting now. This chart basically says on the 16th of March I had the battery temperature issue and on the 25th of March, which is today, that's when I did the test. So as you can see the starting charge before I uh, plugged in the charge demo was 2% and 41%. So there's a big difference on that. Uh, the approximate speed I was doing was 65 miles an hour. The temperature before charging of the battery was 24.8 and 24.2. The inside cabin temperature is roughly about 18 degrees, so it's about the same. And the outside temperature, there's only five degrees difference. Uh, and then the charge time, there's only a little bit of difference between the two. And then we've got the charge slowdown. So this bit tells you at 65% it starts to get down to about 39 uh, kilowatts of charge speed. So 63% of my charge was at 43 kilowatts. And on today's charge, I was 24% at 43 kilowatts. So it's a lot less on the fast charge or the rapid charge uh, at, at high speeds. And the wind speed outside was 40 miles an hour. There was a gale force wind on the day that I had the battery issue and 13 miles an hour tailwind today. So overall, the charge speeds were the same on the first charge. There wasn't any slowdown. That's just how it was at 43 to 45 kilowatts. And the end temperature was 42.1. And the temperature today was only 34 degrees. Right, that's your two minutes breakdown done for you. Form your own conclusion. As for the rest of us, we're moving on. I know I said some, uh, I was talking about the gale force winds on the day causing me to drive the car a bit harder, but I think that's a red herring because the actual temperature beforehand was only 0.6 degrees difference. Um, so there's, there's nothing really, it wasn't really the, the wind speed was affecting my uh, the distance that I could travel, but wasn't affecting the temperature of the battery because I had least by, I knew I could go down to 2% battery or go to dash, dash, dash. So I knew that I could run it pretty low. I think Nissan didn't anticipate people to do that. They would expect people to drive it to roughly about 20% because I would, I'd, before I had Leaf Spy, I'd drive the car down to about 20% and then I'd freak out and say, oh, I need to find a charge point. So, even with at 20%, uh, you would only pull 45% at full charge at 45 or th 43 kilowatts. So even if we guess that the temperature was 36 on the previous chart, 36 was 33 kilowatts. So, you know, 33 kilowatts isn't too bad. You probably not really notice it when, if you if you got things, if you're doing other things at the time. So it just really comes down to how low you take the battery, I think, for it to affect the temperature for the second charge. I don't think it's to do with the uh, temperature outside or inside because in this lovely drawing that I've done here, basically the top picture, the top car, shows what it is in winter. So the, the battery is the two bars underneath. I'll put a little arrow next to it. And the outside temperature is five degrees, so the bottom of the battery is getting cooled. But the inside cabin temperature, because I have the heating on, is at 20 degrees. So that's going to balance out. And the battery tends to, it seems to, on the initial first drive, keep to roughly about 24, um, 24 degrees. Because even when I ran it down below 0%, it went up to 25.2, I think it was. So... You know, it, it keeps to that sort of like level currently. So I'm guessing in summer, so this is all hypothetical, yeah? So 
I expect in summer, if it's 35 degrees outside, if you're inside the car, you're going to put the aircon on and that's going to be blowing out roughly about 16 degrees uh, centigrade air. So you got like the hot layer underneath heating the battery and the inside cabin temperature cooling the battery down. Uh, and obviously the, the Goldilocks picture here at the bottom is if the outside temperature is 18 degrees and the inside cabin temperature is 18 degrees, you don't have the heating on, then the battery should stay roughly around 24 degrees centigrade. So that's my take on it so far. It's the the only thing that I wish I could do today, but I didn't have time, was to run the battery down to 40% uh, again and basically charge a second time. But obviously that would take another couple of hours to do, maybe, I don't know, depends on where I was driving. I suspect Nissan expected most people to be driving to work charging the car every day or two you know at home and if they do go on a long journey they basically recharge the car at every like once they get down to about 20 percent which sounds reasonable i mean some people might want to play it a bit safer and stay above 30 percent so i think as humans we want to push the boundaries of the technology that we get be it a uh, CPU or a graphics card that we want to overclock to see how fast we can make it or in this case a battery where we're trying to get that brochure achievable 150 miles because that's what I'm aiming for and I'm hoping that I can aim for that in summer. Obviously I'm not a physics or a chemistry teacher uh, or a mathematician as such but if any of my figures are incorrect please let us know in the comments below. So once again, thank you for watching and if you like the video, hit the like and subscribe and I'll hopefully do some more tests for you guys soon.